So today, I'm gonna to be doing a bit of a review of One Hot Night that happened last night in Rockhampton. This was the second year that it's been in Rockhampton. It's a local festival run by locals for locals. And I actually shot this one, so I'm gonna review it and I'm gonna talk about a couple of the photos and, and talk about what it was like to shoot it. So yeah, tune in. First up on stage one is a young Rockhampton, I was about to say Gladstone, a young Rockhampton girl named Denver. Denver is fresh out of high school. She ended up on the bill due to competing in a battle of the bands. And she did it, from what I understand, straight after her graduation. She, she went straight there, or the formal, something like that. And she's absolutely awesome. I really, really loved her voice. Listening to her sing and her two originals that she played, she played three, uh, she played five songs, three covers. One was Ed Sheeran, one was Five Sauce. The Five Sauce one you can check out on her Facebook page. The two originals gave me that feeling of listening to Taylor Swift for the first time. I know that sounds like a bit of a cop out, but there's just that youthfulness and quirkiness, I think would be the best way to put it. Uh, so when I look at the photos I got of Denver, bit of context before we go into all the photos and stuff though. Um, the pit itself, like the photo pit, had bass, amps, speakers all through the pit so wasn't really a lot of room to move so for some of them I was actually out in the crowd. Um, for the first few hours of the day it was a lot easier uh, but as the day went on it got trickier and trickier. So with Denver, you know, the 70 to 200 mil lens on, I'll put the details up here of what it was setting wise. And what I wanted to do was sort of capture that youthfulness, quirkiness, playfulness, innocence, all that sort of stuff. All the nice stuff that people like. So this is the before, I'll put the before here. This is the before and this is what we got after. So what I've done is I've cropped in a nice smile. I wanted to sort of just make the colors pop a little bit, add a bit of clarity to it, keep that guitar nice and sharp, you know, sort of capture in this photo what her set was like. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I, I didn't, I wasn't really overthinking this one, so. Yeah, check out Denver. I'm really hoping she's gonna blow up very soon. Amazing, amazing voice, do check her out. I'll drop a link in the description below. The second band on the bill was another Rockhampton band by the name of Silky Fuzz. Now, Silky Fuzz had just released their new EP called Daydream, which is available on iTunes. And from start to finish, their show, like their set, was really tight. Like they forgot a capo for the first song, but they found the capo and then they went back and played that song still, which was a slow one, as it was intended for the start of the show. But it sounded really good. The tracks that they did play from the EP sounded really, really cool. I dug that. They threw in a cool cover of Baby Come Back by Player. The big standout for me though was was the guitarist, Grayson Kennedy. Just the way he plays was able to just get these really cool, intricate guitar parts into these songs that are really chilled and funky and stuff like that. And Luther Herman, his vocals are really cool. The band itself, you know, if, you, if you're if you a fan of the likes of Sticky Fingers and Ocean Alley, I highly, highly recommend these guys. They seem to just take the best elements from all these bands, but I rate them pretty highly. Check them out, again, new EP. Uh, for their before and after photo, this is the before and their after photo, not a lot of difference. All I've done is just cropped in a little bit more, added a slight vignette and made those colours pop because it's not very often that you get to have a cool drummer shot with a cool background that's screaming in different colours and stuff. Usually they're up the back, bad lighting, on a riser and they're really tricky to get so. I really really like this photo and it's just got that slight bit of blur with the shutter speed on it just to give it a bit more action. Straight off the bat, Tia Gostello's set has this real dreamy vibe to it. The roots of her music is based in country and folk, taking a string of songs from the album Thick Skin, released this year, including Phone Me, That's What You Get, and Giants. Tia owns the stage with this Stevie Nicks-like charisma and voice. It's very powerful and you're just drawn to her energy on the stage. She does shake it up a bit with a bit more grunginess on Out of Mind, which features those like 90s throwbacks woe-ohs, which I'm a big fan of. And she's also got a song that's uh, up for nomination in the Triple J Hottest 100 called Strangers. Yeah, check her out again. I'll drop a link to her Facebook down below. Now for the before and after photo from this one, the before, I was not a really big fan of. Obviously pink lighting, red lighting, pretty much any color, any one color of lighting is like a photographer's worst enemy. We do like a bit of a variety. However, reds, pinks, purples, anything from that shade of the color, we're not a fan of. Because they had this really direct pink light on her, it made it very hard to sort of color correct. 
So using a bit of split toning and changing the temperature of the photo, I was able to sort of bring it back down to a bit more natural color. I'm still not 100% happy with this one. Um, there is quite a bit of green in it, but it's not too bad. It's, mm, it's a bit more of an accurate presentation of what was there. Not 100% perfect, but it's a lot better than what the pink was. And of course, just cropped in again and added a bit of clarity to it just to make her pop a bit more. Cool, that's, uh, that's Tia. The special guest of the event was none other than Cold Chisels Ian Moss. Mossy doesn't really need like much of an introduction. He's one of the biggest and most successful uh, singer-songwriters in Australia. He has sort of pioneered the way of Australian rock. I think probably like him and Paul Kelly would be on par with one another. This set is just straight up Ian Moss. There's no extra band. It's just him and an acoustic guitar and just a string of hits that he has crafted and they've just become such a crucial part of Australian rock music. So Ian set focused very heavily on the album Matchbook, which is turning 30 next year, and he's sort of celebrating the anniversary of that one. And so with that, we get Telephone Booth, Out of the Fire, Trucker's Daughter as well, which is absolutely huge. But we also get a few of the old classic cold chisel ones as well. Choir Girl, My Baby, which was an absolute huge sing-along. Saturday Night, which I think is one of his anyway, and it ends on Bow River, and it's just like, it's so it's such a short set, but he makes the most of it. For Ian Moss, I was keeping it simple, because he wasn't moving, because he only had the acoustic guitar, pretty hard to sort of get a bit of a variety, especially when he's not gonna be moving or anything like that, and then the pit once again. Uh, so for this, you know, starting off, a little bit of red on him, wanted to get rid of that. So all I've sort of done here is just zoom in a little bit more, boost the clarity because it's such a cool photo, change the temperature a bit, use split toning just to sort of get those skin tones back to a normal sort of level. And what I also like about it is the fact that it's also got his name just behind him. So it's sort of a very much a, hey, that's definitely Ian Moss photo. And yeah, he's looking at the crowd. This is like five seconds after he'd started. So yeah, keeping it simple on that one. So Pete Murray saves the festival, he's stepping in for Dean Lewis who's had to cancel all his tour obligations due to being sick, so Pete Murray stepped in and for the most part he was only just being a three piece, he had an extra guitarist with him and a bass player with him and they just stuck to the hits, they didn't do too many crazy things, sort of didn't break the mould, you know. They played a lot of stuff from Feeler, including Bail Me Out, Feeler itself, super super long version of Fall Your Way which had the bass player do a flute solo which was actually really, really cool. It was like, hell yeah. And then we had like, you know, Better Days and Opportunity, which were huge sing-alongs for the whole crowd, especially Opportunity, which had like multiple choruses to it, for the whole crowd to sing along. It was really fun and engaging. And of course he ends on Always a Winner. But when it ends, it sort of felt like an extra song was gonna come. I know he's sort of like last minute replacement, but it just sort of felt a bit abrupt. One or two more songs would have probably hit that sweet spot. That's just a personal opinion. Much like Ian's photo, Pete had a big sign behind him as well with his name on it. So all I've really done with that is just line myself up through the crowd and just gotten his name above him. And it makes for like a pretty cool sort of phone background if you're that big a fan of Pete Murray. And then again, just making him pop with a bit of clarity and just cropping in a little bit. This was sort of a tricky one because all three members are right up against the stage. It was very hard to sort of get nice flattering angles of all the members. So for the most part, uh, for Pete's, a lot of them were out of, the, out of the pit area in the crowd. And for the other two, was able to sort of get a few on that real sharp angle and they turned out all right. And then we come to Busby Maru, who for the most part put this whole festival on. When they come out, there is such a strong feeling of community. They're Rockhampton's favorite sons, essentially. And this isn't just like any normal show. They've really gone all out for this. You know, they've got big set from all their releases. They've got Getaway Car, they've got Five Rocks. And it always just, every single song feels like there's a part of the community in it or someone in that crowd can relate to it. And there's just such an energy that comes along with that. And of course, they've also got like special guests that they bring out. They bring out Brad Butcher from Mackay to do a Bruce Springsteen cover of I'm On Fire. Busby's wife uh, was currently in the Gold Coast at the time. Uh, she's about to have a baby, not sure if she's had it since the concert. Um, but they debut a few new songs, one so easy. I actually really like that song. Then they bring out Nat Dunn, who had written songs with the uh, fellas in the past. 
and the song they do is Sleep On It. And as soon as her vocals kick in, the whole crowd just starts screaming. And they're just like, holy cow, this is amazing. Like, wow, like, where has this voice been? Uh, but Nat lives over in the States. She actually wrote Anne Marie's hit last year, Friends, which they end up doing their own sort of cover on. And I've got to admit, Nat does a lot better than Anne Marie. There's just more emotion in it. Of course, with Busby Murray, you know, their melodies, harmonies are just so beautiful and soulful and relatable as well, like the lyrically, very relatable. They take a moment to get a little bit political and talk about the divide between Aboriginal and white culture in Australia and they perform Paint This Land. Jeremy Maru's brother comes out and performs on the didgeridoo and that's a really awesome moment as well. It sounds really cool on the stage. And then they bring out Ian Moss and Pete Murray and perform Tom Petty's Free Falling, which is just a massive sing-along for the whole crowd. And that was a pretty spectacular sort of moment. And then of course they do the cover that introduced me to the band, which was Cindy Lauper's Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. Um, I really like their way, I really like the way they do it. It's such a playful, uh, quirky style. And then they you know, bring it back down, they've got Underlying Message on the ukulele and their new hit, Sound of Summer. Once again, this was a really sort of tricky shoot. Both singers were on either side of the stage, couldn't be further apart from one another. I think I only got one photo when they came to the middle of the stage. Uh, but this particular one I got from the crowd during one of the middle songs of the set. And it's Jeremy doing like a finger tapping style on the guitar. And what I've done here is I've just boosted the shadows and sort of color corrected it just to try and remove a bit of that red and then brought the shadows right up and just see what he's doing on top of the guitar. And I really, really dig this photo. I might play around with it a little bit more, but I'm, I'm feeling like I might actually end up putting this in my portfolio just because it's, it's got the smoke, it's got the color, and it's such an interesting pose as well that you don't really get a lot of. All right, before this wraps up, I just want to say thank you to Amplify for making all this happen. A full gallery of photos is online on their website. Um, you can check that out. I'll also have like a, a proper written review up there as well. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please consider uh, subscribing, liking. If you got something out of it, share it with a couple of friends, all that cool stuff. But for now, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.